In the last part of the lecture, we will give some more details on the course organization. So the idea is that you understand what you need to have, what you need to know already as fundamentals that we built on. We will let you know where you can find more information on those topics like books that you can use, but also how it, is this course organized? What will you expect in the next lectures? And uh, we recommend if you are listening to this course at a certain university to also uh, check the slides, not only the slides linked below the video, but also the slides that will be made available at your university, because in this part, there will be also partic uh, particular slides uh, telling you about the specifics at your university. This course is actually given at at least four different places right now. So depending on the different university, there are slight differences how this uh, course is organized. I would just focus on what is common to all those courses what you should know already are fundamentals of software engineering. Of course, we will not start introducing the standard development processes, right? So already in the last videos, I've used like terms like waterfall model, V model, Scrum, and something like this. You will already he hear this in most bachelor programs on software engineering or computer science. Uh, we will also uh, do a small recap on object on book. Uh, object-oriented programming, but it would be good if you are already familiar with object-oriented concepts, if you have already some experience with object-oriented programming. We will talk a lot about design patterns, how to use design patterns for variability for product clients. We will do a brief recap, but it would be good if you already have some knowledge on design patterns, also from fundamental courses. For these design patterns, we typically use UML class diagrams to uh, explain how uh, are different, what are different choices in the design of product lines and variability in software at all. We will also consider the uh, topic of modularity, so how to modularize software. And these are fundamental principles that we have. For instance, if you think of object on the programming, but also of components. And we will introduce some concepts, but it would be good if you could have a rough understanding already. Then there are also fundamentals of theoretical computer science that we built in and uh, mathematics, like set theory, propositional logic, complexity theory. Complexity theory, maybe not so much uh, of an issue here, but propositional logic will be used to describe what are the valid combinations of features? Uh, so we actually use and build on this and also set theory. And for the exercises, there will be like theoretical exercises, um, also some exercises after every video here, uh, but there will also be some exercises, some practical exercises at some universities uh, where it would be good if you could have uh, good uh, Java programming skills or at least good programming skills in another language because Java is typically used at these universities. And the reason is that there's the best tool support available for these Java uh, programs. What will you learn? We already looked at this diagrams briefly, but I would want to give you a rough overview of what you can expect. And you can also uh, jump into different topics right now if you want. Um, this is the introductory lecture. So this is the first lecture. And this lecture is in a part where we talk about ad hoc approaches to variability. So what does ad hoc mean? Ad hoc means that people are building customized products. They are having software variability. But we wouldn't really consider this in all cases as software product line, as already like they, they reach the end goal. We will discuss some techniques like runtime variability, how design patterns can be used to express variability, how compile time variability can be used in terms of clone and own. We already talked about the clone and own in the challenges part in the last part. Um, and clone and own is that technique that is discussed in the complete third lecture in more detail. And we recognize that runtime variability, but also clone and own have their limitations. And both is not what we want, what we actually want in most cases when we talk about software product lines and the vision that we can freely combine features um, to derive particular customized products. That's why in the 
Uh, second part of the lecture series, we will focus on how to model and implement features. Right? Feature is the central concept. And in the uh, lecture four, we will talk about feature modeling as a technique, how to specify what are the valid combinations of features. We will also look at propositional formulas and how they are, whether they are equivalent or not. And then in the lectures five, six, and seven, we will discuss in detail many implementation techniques that are out there. Right? So every of these, uh, of these three lectures uh, has a number of different techniques in there that can be used and that are grouped whether they use competition, con conditional compilation. We will explain what this means, but in principle it means that we have, depending on or at compile time, we can actually fix the features that we want and then we can generate different products. Uh, we will talk about modularity of features in lecture six, where the idea is that we have a certain module or plugin or something like this for every feature. And in lecture seven, we will talk about particular language de languages designed for features or for product lines uh, in which we can have uh, language support for product lines and features. So in lecture eight, we will conclude this overall to discuss about the overall development process. So I mentioned Scrum uh, Waterfall as different development process models. And we also dis will discuss and see how the de development process is different for software product lines. After talking about this modeling and implementation of features, we will in the last part talk about quality assurance. And we will have three uh, lectures devoted to this topic, uh, one on feature interactions. I already introduced feature interactions briefly in the last part of the lecture. And first, we want to talk about how to deal with feature interactions once we found them. And then we will talk about how to find, how to do quality assurance for product lines statically in lecture 10 and dynamically in lecture 11, meaning that in lecture 10 and the lecture, uh, lecture 11, we actually want to identify uh, feature interactions automatically or at least semi-automatically. And then uh, there is a slight variation among different universities over here. So this is actually a product line of, um, of product line courses. Uh, so you can actually customize it. You can even clone it uh, on, on GitHub and uh, customize it uh, to your needs. Uh, but over here, uh, we will have uh, another lecture on evolution and maintenance, where we also do a wrap up of the whole course. So now you have an overview, and you could also decide to move in and jump into a particular topic that you're interested in. What you might need, what you might need are books to actually read something. If you do not understand all the details, of course, this, this uh, the small videos will just give you a rough overview on the topic and there's more to this and especially if you don't have an exercise available um, uh, at your hand or you're not enrolled at a, as a, at a university or you don't have a product line course at all then uh, it might be interesting to also look at these books uh, first i want to mention the book feature on the software product lines uh, by sven apel don Bartori, christian kestner and gunter sake um, this book was actually uh, written, uh, published in 2013 and written in the years before. And there was a course on software product lines designed originally by Christian Kestner and Sven Apel uh, infra with influences from Don Bartori and Gunda Sake. And this course uh, was then used as, like, as a starting point to write this book in 2013. So, Earlier, I think in 2008 or 9, uh, the course was created. And this course was basically the main uh, inspirational uh, source for this course also. But we started from scratch. We designed this course from scratch. And you will recognize that in some parts, we have a different structure, which we think is more amendable to, uh, to people hearing about this for the first time. Um, and uh, but still, like 80% of the contents that you will hear in this course, uh, we refer to this book uh, because you can read it over there. And then uh, I was also involved in writing a book on product lines. We wrote a book on feature IDE. This is our prototype uh, that we also use in the practical courses. 
And this is a tool that we develop uh, for, I have to count, for almost uh, 18 years now. And uh, this is a prototype where the initial goal was only to support students uh, taking a product line course to understand the concepts more easily than with using command line tools. So the initial idea was to bring command line tools into an IDE. So that's what you can expect from it. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, it developed as a tool that is also used by practitioners out there and might also prove helpful for you to do feature modeling and other things. So this is the recommended tool support for the exercise. Um, uh, that's a screenshot, uh, an inverted screenshot for the dark mode slides, of course, um, uh, from the feature IDE uh, tool. So you can model these features. You can specify what are valid combinations. But feature ID has a particular focus also on, the, besides the modeling, also on uh, the implementation. And there's also functionality for quality assurance. Now, I would like to give some credit uh, to my colleagues, uh, Timo Kera and Elias Küter. So in two years ago, I uh, started thinking about creating a new course. I reached out to people uh, for having a joint venture and creating a new course from scratch because creating a new course is a lot of effort. And also, um, it, uh, it uh, profits from like having more visions. And we've had plenty of discussions before actually writing the first slides and before uh, creating the first slides on this. There was uh, one year of discussions and ideas um, before we actually started creating the course. And uh, Professor Timo Kira is from the University of Bern. He is a professor for software engineering, uh, working on model-based software development. And we, he also brings uh, this vision of like model-based development into this uh, lecture and also like model comparison. Uh, Elias Küter is a PhD student in Magdeburg and he is uh, working on one of the core topics of product lines, uh, in particular on feature model analysis, right? So we'll talk about this later on in more detail, but I've already shown you some plots um, uh, that he created, actually, he created the data for this, uh, where we looked at how many features are in Linux, how many products are there. And if you have questions on this, uh, Elias will be uh, one of the persons to ask uh, about this topic. And um, uh, Elias and I are also collaborating in the feature ID team together with others on building tool support for product lines. Uh, if you go to the uh, top of the of the lecture, you will recognize uh, that there's a link. Uh, you can uh, click this link in the PDF version of the slides, and uh, you can find the whole slides on GitHub. Um, it's actually a product line, but you can just check it out and uh, create all the slides. We also have a slide archive um, with previous versions of the slides. Um, but the idea is uh, that you can feel free to also contribute to this project. So uh, imagine you find a problem with, this, uh, with the slides, you find some errors or something like this, or you have some additional examples, then feel free to clone this project on, on GitHub and send a pull request to us or approach us, uh, write an issue in the issue tracker. We're happy to hear about your feedback and we would like to also collaborate uh, with other universities in the future on this course and also uh, it can be used at other courses because it's a uh, license under CC by uh, SA uh, share like um, license, meaning that uh, the only thing that we ask you is to mention our names somewhere. Uh, but other than that, you're free to give this course also at another university. So. If you hear this course at another university, you will probably have some more slides uh, right about now uh, before the summary uh, of this part, where we talk about more details about how the lecture is organized, how the exercises are organized, uh, how many practical tasks do you have to do, uh, wh what are the practical tasks, how is the exam organized. But this is all different for different universities, so there's no need to record this over here. Uh, and if you have questions on this, then contact your local um, organizers about this course organization. Overall, this course 
we have a focus on how to implement features, right? So the feature is the central notion of a product line. Features are used to distinguish the different products, and we want to understand how to implement those. But implementing features is not the only thing that is that matters. We also need to understand what are valid combinations of these features, how to model them, how to analyze these large configuration spaces, but also how to do quality assurance, right? We have three particular lectures on quality assurance. We have um, five lectures on how to implement features and um, uh, one particular lecture on how to model valid combinations and how to analyze it. We hope that uh, you will find uh, something interesting in this course and will stay with us. Uh, there's some further reading, um, uh, as I mentioned before. And as a practice, uh, yeah, uh, it's a bit hard to ask questions on the course organization, but of course you feel free to approach your organizers if you are enrolled in a university course. And again, even if you are listening to this course online, reach out to other people, write in the comments, try to find other people to watch this course together, to have discussions on those topics, or reach out to us if you're interested or have any feedback. At the end of, the, of each lesson, we would like to give you some questions. So the idea of these questions is to give you um, yeah, some, some means to understand whether you fully understand what we, what we wanted to share with you in a certain lecture part. And of course, not every of those questions can be answered immediately after watching this video or after listening to the lecture. And in some cases, you need more, you need the exercises and so on uh, to understand this completely. Uh, but this um, uh, catalog of questions is designed in a way that you can look through these questions, try to answer them for yourself to understand, did you uh, uh, understand everything? And feel free to already check and consult those questions uh, after every part individually. So the next video will be about runtime variability, and I will be happy if you will join us again. See you and enjoy the silence. <laughs>